Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, post processors. Now, one of the things with post processors, they work with your CAM application. And in this case, we're going to be using Cut2D. And uh, the idea behind the post processor is to customize the G code for your machine well. The in general intent of the G code is pretty much the same. Uh, the way it's processed needs to be customized per machine. So to do that, um, Vetrix has included a number of tool uh, post processors included. So as you can see here, I've already have my tool path set up, and I'll probably cover this out in another video because um, this has come from 123D Make, and it's kind of a cool little program that I'm using to uh, really drives the laser cutter and actually is one of the reasons I built the laser cutter. However, before we go there, one of the things I want to take a look at is again the post processor concept. As you can see down here, you have the post processor tab and you see we have the garble laser millimeters uh, star dot NC selected. Now, if you click this pull down, you see that there's a whole bunch of of post processors here. I think uh, Vetrix ships cut 2D with about 200 post processors. So the idea is is to create our own post processor which we've done here uh, and so I've selected this. So now when I cl click save toolpath I'm going to just overwrite rocket because I've already done this uh, a couple times. So I click save and it says I say yes and now uh, my G code is saved using this post processor. Now, the big question is, is what does a post processor look like? How do you use it? How do you write your own? Uh, basically, the post processor, and I'll pull it up here in a notepad application, it is basically a text file that explains how, how the CAM program should process your um, G code for your machine. So up at the top here we basically have some header stuff um, and then I've also documented the command. So for me I'm using M3 the spindle command to turn laser power on, M4 to turn laser power off. I am also using pulse width modulation to control the laser so and, and garble zero is basically nil or off but remember power is still applied and then S1000 is laser intensity is full. So how to use this and again I'll show a little bit more of this as we go on. Uh, the first thing you do is when you save this file you want to name it Garble Laser and you can kind of see here the the name so I won't go through it. Um, you can name it actually whatever you want. I just find you know having unified naming conventions with the information it is most important and also as you can see with the millimeters or the MM we're going to be working in millimeters. Um, so this next thing you do where to put it is you want to save this to your post processor directory and in my case this is where my post processor directory is found so if you actually uh, go there to the post processor directory let's take a quick look uh, let's see if I can pull it up so as you can see here here is my uh, cut 2d file if I go to Cut2D version 1. If I go to post PP, here you go. Here's all the post processing files. And notice they all end in PP. So this is why you have to ensure that you name your file .pp. So uh, again, Vetrix Cuts 2D can understand it. Here's just the history portion here. Just uh, I just whipped this up yesterday. Um, Another important piece to understand is post name. So Garble Laser Millimeters star.nc is the name, uh, as you recall, was in our post processor when we looked at uh, our toolpath. So I'm going to pull our toolpath back up. And you can see over here, <clears throat> where I have the mouse going, this is the name of it. Now, um, you can change it if you want. You can make uh, you can change it to inches if you want to do an inches because right down here is the uh, unit measurement <clears throat> is millimeters. So you can change that to in and do an inches one. 
the line ending you really don't have to worry about that set. One of the things I should mention, this is all set for garble. So the, the line endings and the format and everything is, is set for the base of garble. So I use that as my basis of creating this post processor file. <clears throat> Uh, again, starting line number is going to be zero, uh, increment by 10. So when it reports an issue, it will have incremented by 10. So it'll go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, kind of get the idea to a maximum of this. Uh, formatting variables, I, again, this is just formatting all the variables of the G code uh, in a way that uh, Garble's going to want to see it. Don't mess with this. You don't need to, but it's important to have this block in here. Now, uh, begin header, this is an important one. So this is going to go at the top of your code. So when you, uh, when you save your code, this is going to hit the top. So this is the your begin header. And uh, basically it's setting some of the common stuff. And notice here we're setting it to G21 or millimeters. Um, also, we're setting home. Notice I've removed all the Z commands from this because you don't need the Z commands and you really don't want the Z commands. It just takes one other aspect of the machine maybe going wild and everything on you. So um, I removed the Z commands. The next thing we've done is we've added uh, S0. This is the pulse with modulation. Now, this is what I'm using to turn the laser on and off. So by setting it to S0, uh, I'm basically turning, setting the laser to nil or turning it functionally, uh, or I should say optically off. Power is still flowing. I can't stress that enough. So the laser is still active. It's just at a, almost nil power. Uh, this is where you're going to want to put your on-off code. So the program should start by first off turning your laser off or ensuring your laser is turned off, which it should be before your first cut because if your laser's on when it goes into a rapid it's going to obviously cut whatever material during the rapid which you know is not something you want uh, the next the next piece is is when we begin the rapid move um, in the rapid move what we do is we again set the laser to s0 so we turn the laser off so when it makes its rapid uh, the laser's off, doesn't cut your material. Now, the important one, uh, not that the others aren't important, but this is probably a little bit different one to understand. So when we begin the first feed move, this is when your machine is, when, when, when Garble's telling your machine to cut something. So this is the first time you're going to cut something out. You're not making a rapid position change. Uh, here we set the, um, the intensity to full. And then we also tell it, we tell Garble to wait for 10 seconds. Now, this is important. So we're issuing a G04P10 decimal. So if you don't put the decimal, it thinks milliseconds. If you put the decimal, it thinks seconds. So why 10 seconds? Uh, the, the reason is, is the way that the laser works is it does not cut instantly. So it basically has to heat up the surface cut the surface and then once once it's cutting the surface and you move the laser the laser will cut rather rapidly if this command wasn't here it, it would simply move to that position and then the head would start moving while the laser had not originally cut through the material so basically you'll get a partial cut or a screwed up cut so this way the laser waits now depending upon your need you could change this timeout variable uh, but it is an important piece to have in there and if you watch some of the cutting videos you'll see that the laser head stops uh, sits there for a few seconds and you can actually see it poke through the material and then once it's poked through the material it's actually like burning well it obviously is burning it but if you if familiar with using the laser once it burns through the initial material then the cut can happen much quicker than the initial uh, poke uh, then begin feed is just you've started your the machine started the motion again notice I've removed the uh, Z axis because you don't need it uh, first arc counter clockwise arc blah blah all this stuff you really don't need now we come down at the end I issue the M04 command to actually turn the laser power off, I could probably add, and I may add, um, 
and I think I will add here, just add S10. Um, the reason I add S10 here is it's do, uh, at S10, a, on my laser anyway, a small dot will appear, a locating dot. So this will be the last, or, or at least in, in my version of, uh, I think it's 0 0.9 something, uh, it remembers the last uh, speed you set it to when it turns back on. So it gives me a locating dot, so I am going to save that. And this will also give me a good example to demonstrate uh, how to save this. So then I'm, so I, since I made this change, I'm going to go save as. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to find my garble laser, garble-laser-mm.pp file. And I'm going to simply hit save and then tell it yes to overwrite. Now this file has been updated. So now let's go through uh, with this updated file. Let's uh, save this toolpath. We're going to do rocket again. Uh, no, we're not going to do rocket again because actually I've got the laser running right now, running rocket. So I'm going to do rocket 02. Uh, so that file saved. So now I'm going to um, go back into my editor. Uh, I'm going to do new and I'm going to look for open. And uh, I've got a ton of files on this, so apologies, it's going to take me a second to get there. Um, laser, Rocket 2. Now, notice it has the NC uh, for the machine. So, all right, here we go. So, we see we have the S0 to turn it off. Uh, then we have, we move to our first position with our G0 command here. We turn the laser on, we wait uh, for 10 seconds, we start the move, so first feed rate, so again, um, I'm not sure why this is putting it in, I have to look at this, so after this, so it first starts and then goes through, now if we scroll down, uh, trying to find the next one. So probably find, just look for the next G04, uh, find next, close. So okay, down here you see it uh, again, we go through our little rigmarole here and wait. Um, so I think this actually is coming up twice because of the, f the first move. The, the difference between if we go back here to... Um, and I go up. Uh, begin header. So we co we come to our first move, and then we go to our feed move. So I think that's why it's coming in there like that. Um, so you might want to again adjust the time a little bit, but uh, anyways, I'm going to post this post processor up on my site. I've uh, done several cuts with it. It seems to be working good. It's well documented. Uh, you know, my suggestion, uh, again, if you're building a laser cutter and you want to play around with it, uh, etc., this is a good starting point. I, I will be making some more changes, um, you know, because as you've seen, it it's doing some interesting things with the first cut and that, so I'll probably have to do some tweaking to optimize it. Uh, but anyways, hopefully this video helped explain how post processors work, how you can edit one, the different pieces, provide you a working example, and you can start creating your own. If this helped you out, please hit like below uh, to help make more videos. Again, the more of these are shared, uh, again, the more the better it works out. Also, subscribe to the channel. Be a lot more of these uh, coming.